Bismillah walhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi brothers and sisters, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope that all of you are doing well and doing fine. In today's video, I want to talk about the day of my shahada and what I did after my shahada, what I have to prepare for, what I have to do to prepare to lead my new life as a Muslim. And I think this video will be interesting for Muslims to find out what are the things that Muslim converts have to do, you know, and have to prepare for that, you know, that normally, usually that we don't take note of. And also, most importantly, this video, I hope that it will serve useful for future Muslim converts who's watching this video right now to know, you know, what are the things that I prepare for and what are the things that in the future you can also prepare to do as well on before your shahada or after your shahada. And just a quick note for people who's watching this video and might not know what shahada is. Shahada is basically the declaration of faith, which is um, testifying that um, there's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his um, servant and, and his messenger. So you have to testify that in front of two male Muslim witnesses and in front of the, the Imam and then yeah, then you will officially um, become a Muslim, right? This is how it is officially done here in my country. I'm not sure if, it's, if it is any different in any other country, but I presume that it is pretty much the same thing, right? There have to be two witnesses and then the Imam, and then you have to recite it in English and in Arabic, um, the transliteration, so that you understand the meaning, and then done so that is the actual um, shahada itself but before that you know of course if you would want to it is re also recommended for you to go to classes and also learn more about islam there's many many classes available out there i'm not sure if it is available in your country but in my country there is this place called the muslim converts association of singapore association muslim converts association of singapore where there is classes there's basic islamic classes and there is also like more advanced classes as well um, that you can go through as well but for today I want to talk about specifically what I did after my shahada right what I did after converting or reverting to become a Muslim and what are the things um, that you know that I still remember right and I think there's quite a few things that I actually still remember right one of the first things that I remember is when I convert after I became a Muslim okay they will give me a bag and inside the bag I showed it in one of my previous videos there's a lot a lot of things inside there's a lot of things inside there's like um, books there's like the sarong I'm not sure what it is called in Arabic I'm not sure if it is a word in Arabic but in in my country here we call it a sarong basically it is a huge cloth that you wrap it around your waist and then um, a lot of people wear that to pray right? it's basically a piece of cloth and it comes in many colors but anyways I was given that and then I was also given a compass, which is um, to show you the direction of the Qibla. Uh, and also I was given two prayer mats, one um, the big prayer mat and then one pocket prayer mat, which is the small one. And then I was also given the books such as the Quran, um, the biography of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and also many other books as well. And one of the first things um, before I get into what I did with these books is I remember, you know, after... Um, um, converting to become a Muslim, I went out with two of my Muslim friends who had to be there as a witness to have a small meal outside, right? Just like simple noodles. And afterwards, I saw my teacher who taught me how to pray uh, in, the, in the prayer class. I saw him as well. You know, he was, I think he just ended his class at the Muslim Converts Association and then he walked out of that place and then he walked towards um, where we are, which is pretty near. And then um, I saw him, I, I went over there and I um, greeted him and then, you know, I told him that I just became a Muslim, I did my shahada and then he gave me a hug to welcome me into um, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, right, the Muslim uh, Ummah, right. So basically, um, that was a very nice moment. And also, one of the things that I forgot to mention is that once I completed my shahada, the Ustad, who was there, and my two of my friends, they also give me a hug as well. So I find it a very nice thing. Um, I don't usually um, give people hugs or get hugged a lot. So it is a, a moment to remember. Yeah. So afterwards, after everything, um, I had to part ways with my friend. They have their own plans. I have my own plans for the day. So I actually have some course um, which is work related and I have to attend the course. So I went 
there, you know, with my bags of stuff. And I remember, you know, I just keep looking at my bag, you know, looking at the, the prayer mat, looking at the sarong, looking at the, the things that they have given to me. Right? I just, you know, couldn't wait to go home and use it, right, and try everything out, right. And one thing I remember is during Zuhur time, um, I have to pray at the staircase because I was at this place that um, I was having my course, right? So I have to find a place to pray. So that is my first ever prayer. That is my first ever prayer um, after becoming a Muslim and I had to find a staircase and pray. And luckily, you know, Alhamdulillah, in, in the bag that they have given to me um, when I converted to become a Muslim, they have given me the pocket prayer mat, right? So that I, ca I can actually use it on the spot right there. And Again, the experience was, uh, it was not a public place, it was like a, a private building, but again, I still feel very, um, I would say, nervous, right? Because I, I just learned, um, like a few days ago, I just memorized like two surahs, three, three surahs, like Surah Al-Fatiha, um, um, Surah Al-Ikhlas, and also, um, What's the next one is the Suratul Falak, right? So these are the three that I only remember and I just memorized it a few days ago. So I had to, you know, concentrate and try and remember everything <laughs> while, you know, hoping that no one will come and see me because I really will not know what to do at that time because this is my first ever prayer, right? So it was a... Uh, good experience it was a good experience i will talk more about this maybe in a future video but i want to keep it more general in what of the, what, what are everything that i have did that day so afterwards um everything go, goes on as normal and after that i went home and the first thing i did the first thing i did um is to check the direction of the qibla in my house right which is the direction to pray towards in my room i'm sure that this is something that not many people will do you know or find out right because like um usually i think for born muslims they already know right from their parents which is the direction that they, they pray towards you know they already have the prayer mats in place in that direction and most people already know right what is the direction if they have some place to pray at and uh, it is an interesting experience for me. I had to find out how to use the, the compass, which is provided inside my bag. It is not like a digital compass. It is the old compass, which uses actual magnet. And uh, yeah, so um, there's actually a small booklet as well that I have to go through to look at my, my region. And then there's a small number to, beside it, like maybe example, 120 degrees, right? So. I have to look at the compass and then measure accordingly the direction of the Qibla. And then afterwards, I also downloaded an app, you know, that helped me to confirm that this is the actual direction of the Qibla so that I do not, you know, do anything wrong, right? So that is one very interesting experience, you know, finding out the direction of the Qibla. I think I, I spent uh, maybe 15 minutes figuring out how to use the compass and uh, it was... It was a very nice experience, you know, doing everything for the first time that I will never get to experience again, right? Like right now, I already know how to use the compass. I know the Qibla direction in my house. The only time probably I will ever have to find out the Qibla direction again is maybe when I move house or when I go on holiday and I stay in a hotel. That's the only probably time that I have to find the direction of the Qibla. And most hotels, they have the direction of the Qibla on the roof, right? They have the green arrow on the ceiling and to point towards the direction of the Qibla. So um, it is not something that, you know, we get to do often. And, and that is one thing that um, Muslim converts need to um, find out, right? And if you are a future Muslim convert, inshallah, and then watching this video, um, I think if you don't have the compass, I think you can just use the app application on your iPhone. It is actually much, much easier. But if you want to use a compass, you know, want to find it out, how to use it, it is actually quite um, an interesting experience as well. Afterwards, I also have to, you know, take out my prayer mat for the first time and lay it on the floor, um, the big one, and it is actually a very nice prayer mat. I will show it to, to you, all of you next time. It is a very big and nice prayer mat, and it is a very nice gift from the Muslim Converts Association. 
And um, afterwards, I, I had to learn how to wrap the sarong around myself, the cloth, right? Because I have no idea how to wrap that cloth around my, my waist, right? I, I thought that I have to tie it up, but no, it is actually quite simple. But, you know, but it is not that easy for the first time, you know. Now that I do it every day um, to prepare for my prayers, it is actually, um, you know, getting easier and it is much easier than before but at that time you know i have to watch a youtube video and follow along so if if you want to um, use a sarong um, for your everyday prayers um, it is not a must to use it as long as you know you cover up to your knees from your belly button to your knees for guys um, but it is just more convenient right so you don't have to change the pants um, long pants every time or whatever you can just wrap a cloth around you which is very convenient and also it is actually uh, I would say a very different um, feeling as well when praying because when you wear pants usually the pants are, are tight around maybe your knees you know when you are in the um, different positions you know your pants will get tight but when you wrap a cloth around you it is very free right it is very free there's like less restrictions so this is also one of the things that i have to um, learn as well when i just converted to become a muslim and the last thing that i remember that i have to learn on that day itself is to find out the time of prayers right so that i can prepare for the next day itself and i can set my alarm for the next day morning right so there's usually a, a, a pretty similar time every day um, at least for my country that um there are the prayers time maybe it will fluctuate here and there a few minutes every day but pretty much every day is about the same time um, of course throughout the years it will be maybe a little bit different maybe 30 minutes difference but every day it is pretty much the same so um, that's one thing that um, you have to get used to as well and you have to remember the prayers time time of the prayer uh, or, or if not you can use an app to um, download and then give you the notification as well that it is time to pray so um, but knowing it, um, it is much easier and much better because um, you have a general idea um, that what your day's plan should be like, you know, in order for you to pray, like you should plan your day out um, around your prayer times instead of planning it the other way around. But yeah, so um, these are the things that I have to do. Um, it is a very interesting experience. I will try and remember what are more of the things that I have to do maybe before as well. Um, I think I did a video once on how I prepared to become a Muslim, what is the Shahada process like over here in my country. But uh, I think that was a very brief and very country specific one. So in, in the future, inshallah, I will uh, make a video as well to um, show you some of the materials that I used, some of the videos that I used to learn more about Islam before I actually, you know, became a Muslim, right, to gain the basic knowledge that I have about Islam. So, that's it for this video. I hope that all of you find this video interesting. I also hope that you find this video helpful and useful for future Muslim converts to know slightly what to expect on their first day of uh, becoming a Muslim and so that, you know, you can prepare this beforehand, right? So, um, especially the Qibla one, right? If you know the direction of Qibla in your home, uh, it is much easier, but you know you can do it anytime. Just you can even download the app on your phone right now and check it out. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think that uh, there's anything else that I should share to help future Muslim converts? And do you think that there is anything else that they should prepare for? Leave it down below in the comments. I might do a future follow-up video on this because I think this is um, very very useful because I don't find much videos like this on the internet to on what things um, Muslim converts should prepare for. So hopefully this video will be helpful, inshallah. I'll see all of you in my next video, inshallah. I hope that all of you have a nice day. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye-bye.